They're fat-free and they taste like cotton candy. I love meringues and you'll love them too when you see how easy they are to make because they're basically egg whites and sugar. You will need an electric mixer like this though because you're going to beat these egg whites for about 15 minutes because you have to get a very solid strong meringue going. You could use a handheld mixer but it might take you even longer to get the same effect. And also, don't do this on a rainy day because it has to be a little, you have to dry out these meringues. So if it's raining, skip it and maybe do it on another day. So okay, here's the recipe. First thing you do, by the way, is you preheat the oven to 200 degrees, which I've done. And you line a baking sheet like that with parchment paper. And I usually just cut it and hope that I get the right size. Okay, and I put the scissors on to hold the paper down. Now, you start with two egg whites. And be very careful because you can't have a speck of fat. Make sure the beaters are clean, the bowl is clean. One tiny speck of fat and you won't get the meringues that you need. So I suggest breaking them into, into two different bowls like this and then you can separate them. So you break the egg into one bowl and then you put that in your hand to separate the egg. That's a nice safe way to do it. This way if you mess it up you haven't ruined your, your, your meringue mixture, your egg white mixture. And uh, you do two egg whites like that. It's best if they're at room temperature, and I've already put two egg whites in the mixer that are at room temperature because you'll get a little bit more volume when they're not cold. So you start off by two egg whites, which is in the bowl, and you start mixing at a medium speed or so for about two minutes until they start to get foamy. And, and uh, don't beat them too high because you have to build the strength in these meringues. So you'll beat this for about two minutes and then we're going to start adding our other ingredients which is uh, cream of tartar and sugar and vanilla. Very simple. I'll be back in two minutes. Okay, it's been about two minutes and now it's time to add cream of tartar which gives this meringue stability. You need a quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar. Just add that in. And I have it on number four by the way which is about a medium speed. So don't overbeat it. Let it build slowly so it'll have more strength. I'll be back in about three minutes. Okay, it's been about three minutes now. You'll see that the um, egg whites are quite stiff. You should check them, make sure. You see they're hanging on nice and solid. So now, we're not nowhere near done, by the way. Now you have to start adding the sugar. And you add a half cup of sugar, but very slowly, like a tablespoon at a time. It should take you about a minute to add this sugar. So just slowly, one tablespoon at a time, let it incorporate. You can do it, if you're unsure you can do it, you can measure the ta tablespoons like this. If you feel confident, you can count about a minute or so. You can just kind of slowly add a little bit and wait. Add a little bit more and wait. And when the sugar is all added, then, you gotta, then you're really going to beat these things for about five minutes. Okay, we're just about done. Now, now that you've added all the sugar, now the same speed, just keep it going for five minutes. We'll be back in five. Okay, it's been five minutes, but we're not done yet. You still have to add vanilla. Now, since vanilla is the only source of flavor for these, use a really good quality vanilla, no artificial. It has to be pure vanilla extract. And you need a half a teaspoon of vanilla. And that's all there is to the recipe. Half a teaspoon of vanilla into the egg whites. And guess what? One more minute. I'll be back. Okay, it's been one minute and we're finally done with all the beating and this is how they should look. See how stiff that is? That's what it should look like. Very, very stiff, glossy meringue because it has to have that much body for it to, to, to uh, bake into uh, good meringues. So anyway, I try not to, to beat it too much so I'll just use a knife to get... Look, see, you can see how stiff it is. That's what it should look like. If it doesn't look like that, go back to the beating Take a tea break and come back. It's pretty hard to overbeat uh, meringues like this. Now, oh, another thing, don't lick the meringues. This is still raw egg whites. You can get salmonella. Not likely, but it is possible. So don't, don't lick the beaters. I never lick beaters from cakes or cookies or anything for that reason. It's still raw eggs. So let me put this aside. And you get two spoons. This is the fun part. And by the way, kids love to do this too. Um, you just take two spoons. You don't have to do anything too fancy. And you just start to drop the meringues, little, you know, dollops like that on the cookie sheet. And you can play with it with a spoon. You, you can put them close together. They're not going to spread, so some cookies you have to put apart. You can put these really close together. And you can take the spoon and, like, swirl it a little bit, you know, make 
kind of make peaks like that. Maybe your kids can have a contest of who can make the higher peak. Whatever peak you make, that's how it's going to look when it's done. It's not going to, uh, it's not going to fall down. So here's one that with a ready-made peak, I'll just leave it like that. And I'll see if I can get one really, really tall one going, and you'll see what I mean. So you hold, you just kind of swirl. See? So I'll continue that. I'll finish the sheet, and then we'll put it in the oven, and I'll be back again. Okay, they're all set. They're ready to go in the oven, 200 degrees for one hour. And what you do after the hour, you turn off the oven and leave them in there for another hour, and then they're all ready. This is what they look like when they're done. Aren't they beautiful? You get this many meringues out of two egg whites. It's just amazing. Also, these should not be refrigerated. They will keep in a closed container, though, for weeks, even months. Uh, but I'll tell you something. You won't have them around for that long. Because these things are so delicious. They're a little bit messy sometimes. But it's like, it's like eating air, you know? You, really, you can eat two or three of them, and you don't even feel like you've eaten anything because there's no fat. So anyway... Enjoy.